Hello, I'm Drew, I'm that frog guy, that light is really bright, and uh, today we're just going to start talking about some saltwater tanks, so let's get into it. So, first tank we're going to talk about is Pennywise tank. Pennywise, I've had for over a year now, we'll zoom up on him. Um, he is a wart skin frogfish, like many of you guys know, and I don't really get an off in time to look at his pattern. Look at him. He is looking great. Um, he primarily eats ghost shrimp. Um, this tank is a 20 gallon tall tank. I could hide the plants behind me. A uh, 20 gallon tall tank is filled with mostly soft corals. As you guys can see, I just fed them a little bit ago, so they're kind of happy. A couple feather dusters. There's another one down there somewhere. We got a Recordia, and then we got one LPS there. And technically one LPS there, which I moved in from the other tank, if it'll focus. That is a Leptocera jack-o'-lantern. It looks better underneath. You can kind of see it's orange, but with this lighting, it's not really going to show up on my camera. And I haven't figured that out on this new S10 Plus, how to like adjust things. It's also got this, uh, um, what do they call it? A Mummy Eye Chalice, or a Hollywood Thunder Chalice, I can't remember which one it is. Um, it had had a whole spot eaten away. It's actually starting to regrow back completely, so that's really good. Um, and then I just moved you in here, or this uh, hammer from the other tank, because it was getting stung by something or irritated. So I think I figured I'd bring it in here. It looks a little better today. Um, we also have these um, polyps here. Look, there's a little bug or something. Maybe it's just a poop. I don't know what that is. Um, but yeah, these are the green, not green star polyps, these are the cl green clove, green blue clove polyps or something. And then we got these snake polyps here with the extension. But let's talk about the light and stuff we got on here. Well first I'll show you kind of my uh, setup here. I have everything off the floor now. We have our auto top off, our high door, and then we have this power strip, it's just a normal power strip. Um, where I'm running all my pumps. Nothing is on the floor level, so nothing's gonna overflow. And then we have our main source of power, which is actually, if you follow the cord, comes out from over here, and it is on a GFI, for those who wonder. Um, none of the basement ones have GFIs on here, so I put every one of the large power strips on GFIs. And yes, I have a lot of things plugged in. I would love to get like an aquarium controller here to run this tank, but I have another tank over there we'll go to next. Um, but then we're all jump down here to the sump and turn the light back on. Kind of show you guys what's going on down here. I'm leaving the yellow filter on so I don't have to take it off. But we got our smart level there. We got a small little return pump. Some braided hose for those of you guys who care. We got just a little LED ball of here growing some macroalgae. We got a pump down here to help put some flow in the sump. We have our Octo. Reef Octopus, I'm just going to do the top of it. I think I got this one from BRS a while back, and it works great. It's really dirty for those of you guys, but the tank's nice and clean. There's a bristle worm down there. I actually added bristle worms to this tank because I wanted to be able to clean up everything that gets into the bottom, the nasty stuff. And we got a thing I'm probably going to take out soon. It is my GFO tumbler, my GFO uh, reactor. Um, it just cycles water up through itself, comes through that little tube and out. And then it has GFO media in there. It, I'm, I think I'm going to take that and put it on the other tank and I'll show you guys why. And here's my overflows, my dirty overflow. You can see how much stuff is in my water. Ugh. Um, which incidentally doesn't really affect this tank too much. But it definitely affects the other tank and I'll show you guys. I got a little bit of algae. I need to clean the sump. I know. I'm a little lazy when it comes to this tank because it's doing so well I don't really have to do too much work. We'll hop over to this tank and this is the 40 gallon cube um, that is just coated in algae and I got some new corals in here. We got a plate coral, we got our elegance which I just spun around, I don't know why because I was going to film, and a new hammer here which I think that might be the culprit because I had the other hammer there. They must not like each other enough. And then we have the same type of chalice here, you can see the colors are far different, so I'm not 100% convinced it's the same coral. Um, and then we got, you know, all the other corals we have here, we got some SPS, but as you can see, it's just dominated with hair algae. Um, I've added more flow, 
I've reduced lighting, I've reduced feeding, I physically removed it all. Um, you can see it's a little browning out a little bit, which makes me think it, whatever I'm doing is kind of working. Um, but I'm just having the worst luck with this tank's algae. So I'm going to try one of two things I haven't decided yet. But I'm either going to get a baby yellow tang. Um, won't permanently stay in here, of course. Or I might get a... Um, what do they call it? Uh, a large... Uh, what do they call it? Uh, sea hair... Uh, a nudibranch, uh, whatever they call it. There is a special name, but I can't remember. I think it's just called a sea hare. But I'll get one of those. A spotted sea hare? You can see those two guys hanging out. Everyone's scared of me when I sit in front of the tank because I know they know my hands might go in there at any moment. Um, but we'll jump down to the sump where we have our little guy. He's doing really, really well. He's growing again. Getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger. I don't know if I told you guys in the, the story of he, you know, Flew through the overflow down to that tube, through here, out of that tube, and didn't get sucked up in the skimmer, which is surprising. Um, and then just uh, got into this category here in the stuff. But on here we have this skimmer, which um, has been working pretty good, but I'm wondering if I might just want to flip flop skimmers. And we got another return pump down there. We got a small little circulation pump in there, and then a heater. And then the overflow, our overflow auto top off. Smart level up there. We also have this Viver Spectral light. I really like this light because um, that light was really cheap. That was 100 bucks, and this one was 100 bucks. But this one's much more powerful. Um, so I, it is what it is. Um, same kind of thing. I'm going to take get another one of those power strips like that, hang it up underneath the smart level um, instead of having all that one for my pump. So I can actually add a couple things. If you look, my whole thing is pretty much filled up except for the top stuff, and I can't really use that in. You can see my mark, my line of, don't put your power strips that direction, they'll just tilt out a long way, they don't seem to fall. Uh, gravity works differently. If I would have been a gravity major, it'd be good. <laughs> uh, let's see all these guys just chilling. I want to do something with this tank too, but that's not my saltwater tour today, so we're going to hop over to um, this tank, which we have one of our other guys out and about. This is it's probably too yellow for you guys. This is a camel shrimp, who's just kind of chilling. We got one hermit in there, and then we got the clown. Mr. Mr. I don't remember what your name is. I think we nicknamed you Charlie after uh, my wife's grandpa who passed, but I don't know if that's a perfect name for a clownfish since it's going to change genders. So I was thinking uh, Bruce or uh, Caitlin, one of those two would probably be good for a clownfish. Um, but. We'll jump back down to this guy since I didn't get him on the film last time. They're very twitchy, like a spider, and they're kind of cool. Let's see if I, if I can stay sturdy. Um, but yeah, there's not much really going on in here. Um, this tank will probably move to my office at work. I just want to make sure the rocks are growing coralline, and it doesn't look stu super horrible. I'm going to upgrade the light into a blue one and add some real corals to it so it looks so it'll pop at work. But for now, it's just kind of there. And over to this tank, look at this back on here, and this is my junk tank, as I call it. It has all my junk in it, so we have pulsing xenia, we have more of the Kenyan tree leather, we have, I hate to call you junk fish, but you are my evil bandit back there who beats up everybody, and this is my hermit that likes to eat coral. Um, so yeah, never trust a crab. It's just a 10 gallon tank, it's probably been set up at the same time as this, you guys can see the difference between the rocks. Both dry reef saver rock, kind of getting a coating of green, but no algae growth. Just a solid green growth on it. Same thing with this one. I have no hair, no nothing. And it could just be because I have just the right amount of cleanup crew in there from the beginning and they're just keeping it a little crooked there because looking not through the screen. But maybe, maybe that could be it. But we'll walk over to the third and final tank. Ignore how dirty my basement is, please. Um, we have our test tank here, kind of a test tank. Um, this is my mom's old 20 gallon tank, which right now I just have a bunch of rock in, um, just keeping it cycling. And there's some interesting life on here. We got some starfish, 
got lots of uh, different kinds of, uh, I keep saying fungus. No, it's uh, sponge is the word I'm looking for. Different kinds of sponges, all kinds of different stuff. So, but we got a lot of new Reef Saver rock that wasn't fully cycled from her other tank we were working on. So, and then her skimmer was overflowing weirdly, so she brought it over and I'm uh, testing it in this tank. And see, I added actually a, this is a dead sponge, but I had it and it's kind of cool. They kind of look cool. So I just left it in there. Maybe it'll act as filtration, who knows. Um, yeah, this, this is my last saltwater tank of the bunch. I'm um, just seeing what happens with the skimmer and keeping some rock alive. Bandit may or may not move into this tank. And uh, Mr. Little Clown might move into the 10-gallon tank. I haven't decided. I kind of I kind of want to do something with anemones. Because I have, you know, this the rock flowers. I'd love to get a bubble tip. Now, this tank has not been set up long enough. But a bubble tip would look really cool in here. Of course, I left the light. Because I want to do a bubble tip in there, I just feel like it's too small, but it'd look really cool for work. Um, but I might scratch bringing him to work because I really like him. Move him into there with the rock, and then bring him into the other tank with all the rock to kind of help keep it cycling. And then, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do with any of these tanks. I never really know when to get this back on. Just kind of a fun little experiment. As you guys can come with me and see all the things. I, I haven't really had much time to do videos. I should, I, that's kind of a lie. I've had a lot of time to do videos. I just haven't wanted to do videos. And anyone that's done YouTube for a long time has probably hit those moments of just being a little burnt out, a little wanting your own time. So I'm thinking I might just start taking summers off, guys. It's just a little, a little hard with work, family, and all these other things going on. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm trying to climb some but yeah work life everything it all kind of adds up you'd run out of time my summer just disappeared um, I didn't even hardly film YouTube but uh, so if you guys have any good ideas to remove this algae I got three ideas I'm gonna try vibrant or I might get a yellow tang or I might get a what was the third thing a sea hair um, if you guys Comment down below after watching this video, let me know what you think you would try. Um, obviously the yellow tang would not stay in here forever, he would just be in here till it got big enough for me to give to my mom when she puts up her new 120, 180 gallon tank that she's working on. So it only had to live in this 50 so gallons of water for a little while. Um, but this thing is just wild looking. If any of you guys ever had a conch, they're just so weird, they're like a little elephant. What are you doing? What are you doing? Um, he's the only reason the algae's not to the bottom, because he comes around and it just scoops up all the algae. Um, but we'll we'll end on the frogfish, because he's facing out over here. But yeah, please like, subscribe, and if you guys ever have any good ideas or things you want me to do for videos, um, I'm gonna try to do one a week. Um, it's very hard right now after not doing it for a while. I'm kind of out of practice. But he is moving perfectly for the camera, it's a perfect time, so please like, subscribe if you want to see more Pennywise, who's over a year old in captivity now. Um, and uh, I've only ever fed him crustaceans. We're going to keep uh, keeping up on him, because I know in <coughs> most of the time frogfish don't live over a year in captivity, so it's kind of generally sad. But I'm thinking I've got he's doing pretty well. I'm gonna keep feeding him good. It's a little, a little on the skinnier side of the day, but I've he's I've kept him kind of small. I've really limited his feeding because 90% of the time, people kill him. Keep people kill frogfish by overfeeding. So I wanted to be very very careful with this one. But uh, yeah, we'll talk more. So like, subscribe. If you have any great ideas for the other tank, please comment down below, and uh, we'll be seeing you guys next time.